for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, Killer? Murder, what's good, baby? How you? Chilling, man. Where you at now? Dubai? Monaco. Monaco, man. Monaco. It's beautiful, man. You know, Monaco's just uh, upgraded. South Florida, you know, more money. More expensive shit, more, you know, more, 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 the more of more. <laughs> the more of more? Well, yeah, the more of more, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, once you see one beach, once you see one beach, you see them all, unless it's Jones Beach. Hey. If you only been to Jones Beach, get to Atlantic City Beach, get out of there, see some other beaches, man. You hear that, Larry? See some other beaches, Larry. <laughs> yeah, man. Life's Larry, Larry, Larry right. in love with Larry, Larry, Larry in love with San Diego Beach too much for me. For real, that's your, that's your neck of the woods. Yeah, that's Larry, his part you of love town. San Diego. Which one? Which beach? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I like Coronado. You be on you. You ever stand on that cliff over there? Yeah, yeah. Coronado's the best though. Coronado's the best. That's when I knew I made it. I was eating ice cream paws on the on the cliff. Yeah. In La Jolla, I knew I made it. Yeah. <laughs> That's rich people. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, so let's get into game three, which is tonight. So Porzingis is questionable due to a rare left leg injury. If he is absent, what does his absence mean for Boston, knowing that they are playing in Dallas? Nice Porzingis first. is hurt? Yes. I got to get my cowboy hat back then. Man, I should have. I shouldn't have stopped my order of cowboy hats. Now I gotta. Now I gotta put my. Order. I need a rush order. Have, can I ask you a question? What? Why'd you stop the order? Porzingis came. <laughs> <laughs> Porzingis came. I stopped my order of cowboy. Hats. He said, he said, Mr. Bethy, do you need any more cowboy hats? We got more. I said, nah, Porzingis is back. But if he's hurt, I'm, I definitely need my hat back. I, I got to get my hat back, Keller. I'm going to get Keller a cowboy hat. Nah, you ain't going to give me in that <laughs> freaky shit you got going on in the streets. <laughs> I'm cool. No, the purple one was outlandish. The, pur- the purple one was wow. I-, I told the dude, I said, yo, why did you give me this hat, bro? I told him, I did, it's going to be crazy when you go on this. That's why you can't be listening, <laughs> nigga. When you take this on the show, this going to be crazy, nigga. It matched your purple varsity jacket. I said, yo, then, yeah, then I saw it. I said, yeah, this is this is definitely 69 God yeah. right here. <laughs> Listen, that's on you, man. I don't got nothing to do with them cowboy eyes. That joint remind me of... Like I told you, it remind me of... Nigga said, does anybody in this house have a problem? Do, 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 do. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a different hat. Then I'm gonna have to get probably the ones that the the guy wore in um the Django. They had the right ones on. 
You know how I don't want Samuel Jackson was wearing? <laughs> or Jamie Foxx <laughs> I gotta watch the movie again you're right <laughs> cause I noticed there's a difference there's a big difference when I saw Dion's cowboy hat his hat is different so it is a difference in him it's, it's the one that people wear the paws and the rodeo then it's like the the house nigga ones and then pause is, <laughs> is the owner. <laughs> yeah, I got to get the owner one. But right. back to you, Stat. Back to me. <laughs> Stat says she liked my cowboy hat. Keep it real, yeah, Stat. The, purple, the black one. The black one you said you liked. Yeah, it was smooth. Okay. Keep it real. Black one was smooth. Purple one is a little different. Yeah. The yeah, black because that's, that's the same. That's a sense of authority where y'all are from. Yeah. Where I'm from, niggas walk around with cowboy hats. We got a problem with it. <laughs> we see niggas walking around with a cowboy hat on Lennox Avenue. Maybe not 2024, but when I grew up, you better not. <laughs> y'all are cool yeah, with that. Yeah, Florida boy, he nigga, got the hat on. Down. I mean, watch your mouth, boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm trying oh, to man. tell you, y'all. Y'all, y'all grew, y'all made a girl a little different from me. <laughs> nice. I, st- I start seeing cowboy hats. I think of police on horses, pause. That's just me. Back yeah. to Porzingis, man. Anyway, <laughs> listen, man. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I was talking to the nigga Sin, uh, cause he, you know, these nick niggas just won't stop. They, they still talking about, yo, you know, if, if Jalen was on Dallas, it'd be crazy right now. Or shit, they should have let us in the championship because we would be giving giving Boston a a, 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 better, a harder time. I said you can't be on the East Coast and have two East Coast teams on the championship. What are you like? Niggas not even making <laughs> sense with this shit. They, like, they yeah, should let us Boston in the championship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> word. The niggas, yo, murder. Yeah. The nigga told me, yo, yo. I don't know how long Sim been watching basketball or not. He said he found out that home court advantage means you get four games and the other team gets three if it goes to seven games. He talking about why it's not five two. That's real home court. I said, Sim, this been going on <laughs> for, for <laughs> over fifty years, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? Nah, I'm just saying one game difference. You fight all year for one game. Yes, yes, yes. That's the way it goes. But yeah. back to Porzingis, look, I, the reason <laughs> I brought that up is because I was telling him, I said, listen, man, you know, they see the first game and they're like, damn, Porzingis ain't do that for us when he's at the Knicks, this, that, and the third. And I was telling him, I said, and I wasn't even trying to be jinxy or anything like that. I said, as much as Porzingis get hurt, you better hope he make it through this series. And look, we're, we're at the next game, they told my question, but now I know Porzingis isn't going to play next game because uh, they're up 2-0. Why risk more injury when you're definitely up to zero? We'll see how the game goes uh, tonight. But what I'm saying is Porzingis has a history of getting hurt. He averages over his career, he missed close to 200 games. He averages, if you're doing an average, uh, 25 games a season just about per season on missing games. Now, I know it varies from season to season where he may miss a whole season or he may play 60 games or whatever the case may be. But he's missed close to 200 games in his short NBA career and is averaging 25 games or just a little bit under that per season. Porzingis is an asset to have on any team. He's definitely a unicorn. We can see when he's healthy what he could do. But how, how often is he healthy? And I'm not saying that this is an injury-free league. Of course yeah. it's not. But we have to put this into perspective. Standing talent, how do you balance it? Because Usually you'll say low management or whatever for Kawhi or anybody else. He's been resting for weeks. He hasn't played in three, four weeks. He missed just basically the first, the second and third round just about. So he's been resting. He's been cool. He's just tall and, you know, them tall niggas, the slinky paws. Niggas move awkwardly and fall awkwardly to now. He may not be playing. And I think this will take an effect on Boston Celtics because to me, He's been the real problem. And don't get me wrong, the entire Boston Celtics team been playing their ass off on defense. Uh, Mace mentioned it yesterday how Jalen Brown is picking Luka Pockets 
uh, up and down the court the last first, the first two games. Kyrie Irving just seems to be losing ball shit that we don't usually see from Kyrie Irving. But the one thing that they have had, and Jalen Brown has been a part of it also, is inside presence where they're blocking a lot of shots. And Porzingis had three blocks in the first half, the first game, blocking dunks, everything else. And I think that's bothering Lively and Gafford. So if they get on the court and don't see Porzingis, I think they'll have much more success than they had in the first two games. That has yet to be determined, but Porzingis not being there, this is definitely uh, a better look that Dallas will have, I'll say that. Yeah, I, I fully agree with, with your, what you're saying. If, if Porzingis doesn't show up from the tip, this is an entirely different game. This is mano a mano. This is, this is how we would have wanted to see this series. Um, you want to see Jalen Brown against you know, Luca, uh, you want to see everybody that's playing now, it's even without Porzingis. Porzingis, like you said, is the unicorn. And in the first two games, he had five blocks. So that's that's that that changes the whole game because now when you're going down the lanes, pause. You don't have, you don't have to think about changing your shot. It's you against the actual guy that's in front of you. And I know that Porzingis is determined to play. He said ain't nothing going to stop him. But, you know, Joe has made his mind up that they're going to have a say-so and if he plays or not. And I think what you said is true. They're not going to risk putting him out there being up 2-0. Even after 2-1, they may not still put him out there because they're like, we're up. But let them come back, pause 2-2, and I guarantee you he'll be ready to get back on that court. Um, I don't see this as a series that that's out of reach without Porzingis on that floor. I will go that far. And I know you say, murder, you switch up. But listen, things change. If you take Porzingis off that floor, I would have went with Dallas. For, I would have went with Dallas 4-1 or 4-2. And it may turn around and be that if, if Porzingis don't come back out. But I got to see what Kyrie is doing. I got to put a call out to Kyrie and, and let Kyrie know, listen here, a lot is on the line. We're not playing. You want me to wear the Mavs hat or not, Kyrie? I can't wear the Mavs hat if you're going to be losing the ball. I, I just can't do that. I, I, I can't put my rep as title town on the on the line if you if you're gonna be losing the ball. That just don't make no sense. That's like a crackhead losing their stem. You just they don't do it. Killer, what you think? They don't they don't do it. Kyrie losing the ball is crazy. That, yeah. That's like it's fixed. Yeah. Um, yeah, listen, man, you made a great point about the blocks when you started talking. Because it's not just the blocks. Yeah. It's the block definitely, but altering shots. Knowing that the, somebody <laughs> has the potential to block their shot, it makes you shoot the ball differently. That doesn't go in the stat sheet when you mm -hmm. say altering shots and making people miss shots. Um, as far as Kyrie is concerned, listen, Drew Holiday is, is let's, let's call it like it is. He's been putting the clamps on you. Um, he's looking very out of, out of characteristic. Uh, one thing is, it's one thing to miss shots. It's another thing to see Kyrie Irving losing the ball, uh, dribbling. Uh, I just haven't seen it. Yeah, I don't career. like that. I don't like that. And Drew yeah. Holiday is from L.A. And Kyrie, you from Jersey. This is, come on, you got niggas from L.A. picking you up, trying to steal the ball. Come on, Kyrie. You want me to wear the cowboy hat or not? This is sham. This ain't about none of y'all. This is between me and Kyrie. Come on, Kyrie. Um, yeah, like I said, altering shots is very underrated because now you're switching from a comfortable shot to uncomfortable shot. Sometimes it looks erratic. Sometimes it throws you off. So that's a stat that doesn't go in the um, stat sheet. Uh, and I think Porzingis has a lot to do with that. Lastly, I like to say is, Mace, um, have you ever seen a crackhead lose his stem since you used that reference? Never. 
<laughs> then how would you know? <laughs> how would you know what that's like? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I've never seen it. That's what I'm saying with Kyrie. This is weird. I've never seen Kyrie lose the ball like this. Are this you is calling weird. Kyrie a crackhead? No, I'm saying this. I'm saying a crackhead will not lose that stem. I, I thought that's what the ball was. Pause the Kyrie that he never loses the ball. You know, how growing up in the hood, they like, yo, he had it on a string. He can't lose it. So when you see Kyrie you losing seen, the ball, that's crazy. Have you have you seen crackheads with stems before? Cameron. Come on. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> have you been in that environment? <laughs> in your life? Or I'm talking about your entire life. Have you been in that environment? I've seen a few I've, I've seen a few people with stems, killer. <laughs> what, what, was it good or bad? Like how'd you feel when you watched it? <laughs> <laughs> Normally they come up with a TV They selling you that they stole from somebody They got their pipe and their stem in the hand And they got the TV in the other hand And they're selling it to you for $2 and $5 But no matter how they had that TV They wasn't letting go of that stem So that's that's what I equated no. to that, that's what I'm saying. So somebody came and told you a TV and you gave them crack. That's what you're saying? No, <laughs> that was, I'm saying they wanted $5 for the TV. <laughs> so you bought a $5 TV before? I'm trying to figure out where you get these. these, I, I, in, these like, I was uh, a kid. I, didn't, I was a kid. And I didn't have the you. money, but I saw them trying to sell stuff on the block. I've seen you on the corner at nine years old. That's why I'm trying to ask you exactly what you saw. That's no cat. I'm not even exaggerating. I actually seen you when I wasn't allowed to come outside by myself, standing outside with 25 people. Were, were those people selling crap? <laughs> The Jew is with. <laughs> he that knows, don't tell. <laughs> those who tell right, I right. don't know. All right. I, I, I'm talking about like 88, 87. Uh, yeah, that, 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 whole cor- yeah. that whole corner was yeah, that, crack dealers. Yeah, 133rd Lennox. I used to have to walk to McDonald's with my mother. I see you out there. I didn't know you like that. I said, why well, is that little kid with all these people? <laughs> Did you have a job? Was you, did you, was you working at that time? <laughs> Why were you with that many older people when you was nine years old? Ask me. Uh, <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> no, because I'm not making this up. This is a real story. I'm from 140th in Lenox, yeah. and the only McDonald's we had was on 132nd in Lenox, and I used to walk there with my mother, and I didn't know Mace, but I've seen him outside with like mad 16 17, anywhere from 16 to 24 years old, and he was nine. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what exactly was going on. <laughs> was you a lookout? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you never hey, listen, cease man, to amaze me. <laughs> what I'm saying is this we know the man you are today, but. Even Malcolm X was red, nigga. Yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right. <laughs> I mean, you know, product of the environment, you know. <laughs> that boy right there, it's hard to get anything out this kid right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, I'll move on. Okay, so before we move on, I want to be a little bit clearer on you guys' stance. So do you guys feel like the Mavs have game three? Hmm. This is their best chance okay. at having. I wouldn't say they have it, but this is their best chance at winning game three because Porzingis is not is presently there, and he does make that much of a difference when you got anybody on your team seven three or so. You know that that's going to change the game, especially he he hitting threes. He isn't floaters 20, 20 points and. Almost 20 minutes, you know, those kind of stats. Anybody that could light up the scoreboard like that is going to change the game. And I think right now, with them going back home, getting some home cooked meals and being in their own bed, all of that plays a difference. 
and hearing their, their fans screaming, it's going to turn into a, it should turn into a victory. Okay. And Cam, your thoughts? Well, I picked the Mavericks so far to pick the, to win the first two games, and I've been totally wrong. I'll say this: the Mavericks know uh, they have to win this. If game. they lose this, if they lose this game, the series is over. You know, May said it last time. I'm a grass for the obvious RPOJ. If they lose this game, the series is over. <laughs> Absolutely, nobody comes back from 0 three. <laughs> so I'm going to pick the Mavs because, like May said, and the whole world pretty much knows and. Uh, I don't know how many series been played at over a hundred something where you're down oh three and you don't come back and win. So I'm gonna pick the Mavs again. I've been 0 for two so far in this championship series. Um but they're back against the wall. They could wrap it up. Tomorrow tomorrow's basically their uh their game seven, so to speak. Good points. Okay, and then moving along, Fever coach Christy Size is facing backlash after revealing that Caitlin Clark texted her, Coach, they woke a monster when she wasn't announced on the Olympic team. So do you guys feel like the coach should have kept that information to herself? Or do you think that's something that is okay for the public to know that personal message between her and Caitlin Clark? When I hear something like this, Coach, they woke a monster and she announces this. I think this is this has dual meaning. It's not just, it's not just she's saying what Caitlin said, but I think it's a way to hold Caitlin accountable as well. When you put something like that out there, it forces Caitlin to be able to to perform at a higher level because now the coach has put that out there. So I think when she's saying this. It's not it's not to get backlash. It's more so to to make people even zoom in more on Caitlyn and it's going to make her have to play. It's almost like trash talking. When somebody start trash talking on the court, that's when people start really playing. So when when you say this for Caitlyn to the media, it's going to make her ball on a new level. And I and I'm I'm here for it. I know everybody else is here for it. I want to see her again against that girl that she played that first game against that was ripping her every time. I want to go back and look at who that was, and I want to see her become a monster against that person. That would be great to see. That's when I'll believe that she's a monster. Uh, Me, personally, if I'm the coach, I wouldn't have put that out there. Uh, Simply because it's a couple things. I would have put that out there after they get on a five-game winning streak or after Caitlin Clark has shot over 50% from the field for a few games or when something substantial happens with the fever because nothing has happened substantial with the fever thus far, but people saying Caitlin Clark is coming to town. Uh, All that to me is going to make players like, it's to me like, Mace, I can't think of a great example right now just off the top of my head. If somebody... I know a great example. I give you a great example. Mm-hmm. And I hate to bring them back up. It's like if Jingle say, yo, they woke up a monster. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. It's like, get out of here. Ain't no monster. You ain't no monster. Like, monster. <laughs> oh, nah, niggas, they put me on the all-star team. They woke a monster. Oh, snap, Jingles. What are we going to do now? That's, that's how I Woo, think players. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Sorry, Jingles. I'm just... <laughs> Get out the way. But, Jingles is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Get out the way. <laughs> Ain't nobody scared this of you. Book. Yeah, that's the point. And we've seen this since the season started in the WNBA. Nobody is scared of Caitlin Clark. If anything, they want problems. And by her, her coach saying this, this is going to make players, or they already hyped the player. This is going to make them more hyped, like word. So you thought you were supposed to, especially the people that was chosen for the Olympics, the women that was chosen for the Olympics, they're going to be like, oh, so you thought you want my spot? Move, ice cream, clear it yeah. out, please. Go fuck through, is you talking go about? through, go through. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> we woke up a monster. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I want to put it out there. I think this is going to make it worse. Unless Caitlin got some shit we ain't seen. And right now, this whole season, 
she's had decent games, but nothing compared to her college career. Some games she's looking like a deer headlights. I don't mean that as being scared. I'm just talking about you can see her get the ball getting stolen. You can see her melting when people set screens. You can see her shit getting punched out of bounds. You can see where people are saying that she's flopping when she's getting fouled. Nobody's scared. Nobody's scared. Yeah, she and definitely needs a may- personal trainer. Right. This summer, I think she really needs to work on a handle because for her to be a point guard in her pocket pick like this is just ridiculous. She really, really needs to work on her handle. And and uh, we already know she could shoot, but uh, shots off the dribble, et cetera, not just three-point shots, mid-range game, et cetera. But, you know, that's what they said. What does she bring to the table outside of three-point game? That's what one of the female players has said. So me personally, I would not have said this until something was going good because this statement could have been held. This could have been waiting for the fever to go on a four, five, six, seven game winning streak if possible. How to average 21 during that winning streak. How to shoot better than 40% from the field. And they could be like, well, I ain't going to tell you. I I didn't want to say this, but, you know, a month ago, when they announced the Olympic team, Caitlin told me they woke up a monster, and obviously they did. Right now, mm-hmm. man, it's, 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 right now, it's, it's, we ain't seen no monster, man. <laughs> and putting this out there, it's just going to make niggas be like, yeah, all right, bitch, you want my spot? I wish you would. Yeah. I wish you would come over here trying to take my spot. But like, now when she plays against all these Olympians, she's, she's, a, she's a two-piece dinner, man. Yeah, yeah, some gonna have to give. Some gonna have to yeah. give. Pause for real, because now it's out there, mm-hmm. and and they're they're flaming the coach by saying she's not media trained for even making yeah, that yeah, statement. That's that's the point I'm trying to say. Why even put her under more scrutiny with these girls who's trying to kill her every single night? Now you making it seem like she thinks she should have been on Olympic team, and every last member of that Olympic team, from what I've been hearing, she don't want no smoke with. Her. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. I definitely think that the coach should have kept that confidential, especially if Caitlin Clark confided in her. And you know that she's the hot commodity. So anytime somebody says something about her, people are ready to pick it apart. So that was not the coach's role. She even could have at least waited for Caitlin Clark, like Cam said, to reveal that after they had a better streak. To me, it kind of reminds me when like Kuzma was talking about the Pistons and he was like, it's like, don't be like that team. And they had bad standings, too. It's like, that's not the time to be talking about other people. So I definitely get both of y'all's points in that sense. But this is all part of Caitlin's origin story. Yeah, She's only going to get better. So Right. Yeah. And, and then, at, then at the end of the day, too, we don't know. I don't really, I'm not going to sit and act like the WNBA is like the NBA as far as coaching is concerned. But you got to think about this. This coach job may start being on the line soon. Like, listen, you can't do nothing with Caitlin Clark. You can't do nothing with Aaliyah Boston. We got two first round, two first picks yeah. back to back. What, what are y'all going to do? We don't know. I don't really know her, uh, her cachet with the organization. I'm not going to say and act like I looked up her record as a professional coach. But at the end of the day, everybody jobs on the line. And that's going to be going to question soon if she doesn't get shit done. So maybe this is part of her saving her ass too. Shorty told me she yeah. woke up a monster. I don't know what the fuck you want me to do. <laughs> you know, yeah. you got to start all that early. Yeah, and she might be trolling. You know, this generation, they just want to stay in the media by any means necessary. She might be trolling. And if she's trolling, that's a good troll. How would you rate that troll, Stat, if she's trolling? Not good enough because it's supposed to have some sort of upside to her. That just gave them bad energy. Oh, so so when you're trolling, it got to be an upside. Yeah, it doesn't have to be positive, but it has to do something that's going to benefit you in the end. Yeah, get her name popping. It's not popping. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the problem. So that's what I think. Okay, so that's a bad troll right there. What do you call a bad troll? I, a bad troll or a good troll? A bad troll. Like, call we it? Just, like a like, what, what's the name for right it? Now. No, I'm saying, what's the name? <laughs> Is it a name for a bad troll? Uh, I don't I don't know. Uh, okay. He said we talking about one. So I guess that's Oh, yeah, the that's name. a bad troll. <laughs> You're siding right now. Siding right now. That's crazy. (laughs) Okay, and then before we move along from this topic, so a lot of people are wondering about the update from USA Basketball and their reasoning for not having Caitlin Clark on the Team USA team. 
They released a statement saying, when you base your decision on criteria, there were other players that were harder to cut because they checked a lot more boxes. Then sometimes it comes down to position, style of play, and then sometimes a vote. They also said popularity wasn't a factor in this decision. So what do you think of their response? And do you guys believe popularity should be a factor? That was definitely when they say, when they, let me go back. When they say that this was not based upon popularity, that was definitely shade, right? And then they say, well, there's other players that check more boxes. That's also shade because rumor has it before before um the NCAA's were over, she was invited. They was hawking her to come to come to the tryout. They was definitely trying to get her at the tryout and wanted her to be there the whole time. So she didn't show up to stay consistent with her team while they were in the final fours and in the lead eight and all of those things. And so when she came back, it was like she didn't make it. And I guess they was trying to get her there early to give her a better shot at making it. And she didn't show up for that. So, you know, sometimes when you act like you're better than the program, people shade you back, you know? It's like a silent way to talk to you. People do that, you know? We shouldn't, but you get what I'm saying, Larry, right? <laughs> I mean, I didn't see one rookie make it. So why why should she be the exception? Right? And I get the, I mean, I think everybody on that squad dogs her out. So if Caitlin yeah. Clark was your daughter, would you would you want her to make it? Of course you want her to make it, but it's not a popular she wasn't <laughs> she's not the best player. What has she done this season? <laughs> on the on the court as a professional, what has she done? Larry, you hate Kane. No, I don't hate her. Just listen. I, I think I think these girls are bought are, are dogging her when they play her. And he, and and what has she done as a professional? She's Tim Tebow to me right now. She's a mm. she's a great she's a great college player. She's a great college that player. That was mean right there. She's a Tim great college Tebow. player. She's a great college player. But when you get to the pros. It's a different ball game, baby. They gonna run with that. Let them run with it all day. Larry, that was mean. That was pause. That was that was a good take, killer. Tim She's Tebow. Tim Tebow. She ain't did nothing. So should, should Angel Reese be upset, take. killer? That's a great take, Larry. You know how much they wanted Tim Tebow to do of well. Of course. Yep. Yep. She George. <laughs> I ain't gonna sense. go that far. I was gonna give her a <laughs> boxing reference, but I'm gonna leave that one. <laughs> She's better than Tim Tebow, though. Nah, man. come on, man. Tim what Tebow. Bo- what boxing reference? I was going to say Jerry Who Clooney. Who is she? <laughs> Jerry Clooney. Jerry Clooney. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Clooney. Clooney's crazy. <laughs> Jerry Clooney's what? <laughs> Tommy Garns. Who is this? Laugh is taking me out. What was his name? <laughs> Killer <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> what was it? Tommy. <laughs> Tommy Morris. I know you talking about Tommy Morris. Yeah. No, not even him. Jerry Cooney was the one. <laughs> yeah, he was a no. He, Jerry Cooney was labeled the Great White Hope. <laughs> he I <was>. mean, <laughs> I'm not going that far, yo. I rock with Caitlyn. I ain't gonna lie. They're trying to make this a I bird. Think the Tim Tebow, I think the Tim Tebow thing was great. Yeah, Tim yeah. Tebow is 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 a good take. Yeah. Okay, and Cam. What I'll say about it is, yeah, look. May said, and I didn't notice. He talked about it before. Has she been invited? uh, I guess after the Final Four, during the Final Four, whatever time before Olympic people, to uh, was given that time to get a head start on on it, and she didn't go. Um, I don't think. I disagree with Mace when he's saying it's shade. I, I get what he's saying. I don't. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I think that does happen. It's two <laughs> things. That she, two ways she would have made that. Two ways she would have made that team. If the Olympics, if the WNBA schedule was after the Olympics, she would be on that team because you wouldn't have seen her play since the NCAA. But because mm. she didn't bait every night, <laughs> and you see, you see the big difference in the disparity in between play is fucked up. And the problem that people are having when it comes to these blogs and analysts and so on and so forth, it isn't like college basketball in the NBA. 
College basketball, men's I'm talking about. The season ends in March, beginning of April, and you don't see them play again until September, October. The NCAA tournament ends in April, and you see these girls play at the end of May. So it's only really a month and a half off. So people aren't really understanding her not having the success right now that she just had three months ago, not realizing the level of competition that stepped up tremendously. They like, damn, she couldn't have fell off that bad. She just was busting ass a month and a half ago. Not against these women, they, she wasn't. And that's the difference. So when they say that she doesn't check the boxes, look, I can look. International play is the best among the best among the best in the world. And I don't know how many foreign players are playing in the WNBA, but we see what's going on in men's professional basketball to where four of the top five players in the world are not from America. So we can't have our point guards getting ripped on the national level in the, in the, in the Olympics. Now she can't make it up the damn court in America. What's going to happen in Paris? Mm. So, so when we say check the boxes, I'm not disagreeing with what they said because listen, as much as as much as people are hating on Caitlin Clark, I'm talking about it's people that still rooting for her and loving her, and that's why it's a problem. And the WNBA know that this would be beneficial to have her on the team financial wise, um, to move this to, to move women's sports forward wise, to build the WNBA. This is all great things to have on the team, but. When you're not meeting the criteria for international play, let alone not doing it in national play, you're going to look stupid. And everybody has a reputation to keep on the line. So now if you pick her and she doesn't do good, whoever's picking the females for the Olympics, they're under scrutiny. Now they're going to be under investigation for seeing if they took a bag under the table to get this bum-ass female to be playing on the Olympic team with the best females from America. It trickles Come on, down Killer, and it goes down the list. You can't be calling her that. That's Caitlyn. He's calling her what? Bum females. I, I ain't say this bum ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said bum female. <laughs> yeah. Now, Caitlyn can shoot, but she can look in trash, yeah. man. <laughs> I, I'm rooting for the girl. I've been rooting for her for two years, but look, you got to call her <laughs> like you see it, man. Now listen, I, I've been I've been I've been rooting for this girl. Last the last time I started rooting for Caitlin Clark is when she played against South Carolina in the championship. I said I gotta go with my I gotta go with the blacks. It's black and white. So I had to go with black people all the way up for the last two years. I've been rooting for Caitlin Clark. But I gotta call it like I see it. Same way you just called out Kyrie and said this is you and him. It's the same thing. You ain't going, so you don't see Kyrie turning the ball over. You don't see Kyrie missing the shots. You don't see Kyrie doing <laughs> uncharacteristically things that he usually does. So you called it out, right? <laughs> she ain't been playing like a bum. <laughs> I'm just saying. She's doing good. She'd be on the team. It's beneficial for her to be on that team. But you don't want to lose your core players, neither saying this bowl, bowl. This whole, the nigga sucking dick. <laughs> Just to add, there are rumors saying that if one of the main players get hurt, she could potentially be a sub. So that goes to kind of like my next question. I know you guys all talked about her skill set and basically is just the girl. Don't know. Let me ask you a question: Is the girl Cameron on the team? No, but she's on the Angel three Reese? on three. She's on the three on three basketball team. Angel Reese, no. Is Angel Reese on it? No. Yeah, these are all rookies that's playing better than her to me right now. So if they throw her on there. I know they play different positions. But it should be other people if we're going to, if if you're not going off of, uh uh what was the word they use celebrity yeah is popularity. Brittany Griner on that team popularity is Brittany on it yeah popularity Brittany Griner yeah yeah center yeah so you yeah, guys like, don't think popularity should be a factor that's just base question long I as mean, Brittany you could be the most famous okay, my bad Marie. yeah I'm go sorry. ahead. No, when you say does popularity be a factor? Not to me. I mean, don't get me wrong. You want people to come see your superstars, but not you could be the most popular niggas and get blown out every week, every game. Yeah, we're trying so to win. We're trying popular. to win gold. Yeah, you trying to Yeah, you trying to win and you trying to be popular. It's a difference. And you could be both. 
But right now, she's not both. She's not winning, and it's showing. So to me, when it comes to international play like this, anything it should not be popularity, but that's just not the case with everything. You know, sometimes you go, right now, like, for instance, it, it, it's not popular. I, I don't know if you call this reverse popular or anything else. I'm talking about shit that's not fair. Fuck on the popularity. Let's talk about shit that's not fair. Is it fair that Giannis's brother is taking up a roster spot? Is that fair? No. Mm. It's what you can negotiate. It's, it's what you can negotiate. Is it fair that Tarasi is playing at 42 on the Olympics? <laughs> Mace, you was the, you the one who went to bat for it. You tell me. You the one jumped out the window. Oh, Nick, man, we got to get to a whole nother conversation. We talk about Diane and Tarasi and the legend. No, this was you, so you tell me. Of course she should be on that team. Okay, okay, no problem. That's the no goat. Problem. That's, That's the female saying. goat. And one day I want to have that conversation. She's the female goat. To Rossi. Um, before we go to break, though, I do just want to add, I do feel like Caitlin Clark is trying her best with what she has. Like, her stats, I know how it looks. Like, it's she is having kind of a rough start, but she's not doing terribly bad at all for the team that she's on. Like, you compare stats. She does have some comparable stats to Sabrina Ionescu, plays for the Liberty, which is obviously a lot better of a team. But I just don't, I don't want to say that she's like a terrible player because she's not. Like, but Thank given you, the stat. circumstances, Thank you, this is just not her time to be on this Thank team, which you, is okay. Stat. <laughs> Thank Listen, you, Stat. At the end of the day, I, stat nobody was, said she wasn't. A, yeah, my bad, my yeah, I'm sorry. Stat was trying. I'm glad Stat cleared that up because I was thinking it was a reverse racism thing. It's it not. was starting to feel like that. It's not. Pause. And I wasn't saying that you guys said she was a bad player, but I just know that some things can get taken out of context. So I just like to clear that up for viewers listening when they hear certain fuck. words. I don't give a <laughs> fuck what niggas think. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not pronouncing stand them all right. I'm going to say bitches is getting their periods when they get them. I don't care what them. I don't care. See, that's, that's the whole thing. I don't care. Dude, when they, y'all start caring too much for me, this ain't the show to care, man. <laughs> oh, I just want to clear that up. I ain't clearing nothing up. She playing like shit. Leave it she, where she it is. She playing like shit. Yeah, man. At the end of the day, she was winning. Now she not winning. I'm not clearing up nothing. That's just that. Start winning. Start winning. And, and I know it's that's a decent human team. Yeah, get a yeah. stand on my right. Get a yeah, shit together. Get a stand on right up. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> I'm telling you, you get a shit together, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not clearing up nothing. If Mason <laughs> Stat want to clear that up, that's on them. But my disclaimer, I'm not clearing up nothing. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like, respect that. That's probably correct. I like correct. South Let's America y'all. killer. I like South America killer. <laughs> <laughs> he back. He back. Yo, you funny nigga. <laughs> Okay, y'all. I'm Yo, Mace, Mace, oh. Mace, Mace, yeah. Mace, 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 just Kansas and France, bro. Just so you know. Right. Just letting you know that. Okay. All right, man. Just, just all right. Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. Okay. okay. So we're going to go to break when we return. You took me around the world the first time. You took me around the world the first time. You should know this. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad my bad all yeah. oh, good okay we're gonna go to break when we return we will discuss a new venture from Steph Curry don't go anywhere Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, game three, Mavs versus Celtics. Underdog fantasy has Derek White at four assists. Do you have him higher or lower mace? Well, he should be able to get more than four assists. He can get five. I'm going higher. 
He got his hair cut now. He's ready to play. Yeah, Bulls have been moving a rock lately. Their their motion offense has been looking spectacular. Uh, will it fall in Derek White's hand to get four assists? I'm not sure, but I'm going to go higher as well. Okay. Al Horford is at 19 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have him higher or lower cam? I'm going to go higher. Porzingis is out, uh, or most likely will be out. And he was eating up a few minutes of Al Horford's time. I think Al Horford's going to get way more minutes tonight, so I'm going to go higher. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to go higher, too. Okay, and PJ Washington is at 14 points. Do you have him higher or lower mace? 14 points. Hmm. Who? PJ Washington. He ain't going to have 14. I'm going lower. <laughs> so I was reading an email. PJ uh, Washington. I was telling PJ Washington, 14 points. I think you'll have her right now. I'm going to go higher. All right. <laughs> Mace disagrees. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So Steph Curry and his father, Del Curry, are launching a podcast named Heat Check. What do you guys think of Steph Curry joining the podcast wave alongside Draymond Green? It's not together, but they both mm. have podcasts. When it comes to Stephen Curry and his dad, both of them are phenomenal shooters. Um, you know, I think it's pretty phenomenal to be a dad and a son that played in the NBA. I think they'll have some phenomenal guests, and I'm I'm going to go on the record and say I think it'll do very well because Dell Curry seemed to have a lot of personality, a lot of personality that we weren't privy of watching him in the NBA because the spotlight wasn't on him like that. But I could tell by certain things he does in the crowd the dynamic of his dad, I mean, the dynamic of his son playing in the NBA and the dynamic of his relationship with, with their mom, I think is is perfect for some some great content. I think it's perfect. What's the exact question, Steph? Yeah, just how do you feel about Steph joining the podcasting wave? Because we know Draymond Green has one too, but how do you feel about him and his father entering that? I'm just happy we started when we started because this shit getting oversaturated. <laughs> shit getting out of control. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Shit, been, I'm happy we got it when we got it. And I think niggas be watching us and I'm not going to put this on any athletes. I'm just saying in general, people be like, they doing it. We can do it too, right? <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word. I was at Radio Shack. The mics is only $19.99. We shut that shit up in the living room. We... My shorty know how to upload it to YouTube and all that. Like, nah, we can keep, because we be talking, the shit we be seeing be real, right? But that's what I really be thinking <laughs> niggas be home doing. For real, I really believe that. Well, congratulations, <laughs> killer, because that means we made it look easy. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I mean, what, I mean, what's new, nigga? What's new? You think, what you think is... Everything we do, we make it look easy, nigga. That's what make look. niggas we, think we they can the do store. it. Yeah, we doing it like we doing it for TV when we going to the store to buy toilet paper. It don't even <laughs> be that hard to put. Like, we, all we doing is breathing. We just breathing. <laughs> you know, I ain't even doing much more than breathing and walking. <laughs> Everybody else throwing, jumping through loopholes and everything else, nigga. All I do is breathe and walk. Thank God that I can do that. And at the end of the day, niggas is thinking they could be me or you or anybody else. Go ahead. Yeah. Man, yo, listen, you can't buy this. This is not for sale. This shit that I got that we got is not really for sale. Yeah. You can't go to Costco and get a bulk load of it. Yeah. You can't go up to Harlem and be like, yo, I'm going to hang out all summer. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to spend the summer in Harlem. <laughs> I can get some of that shit on me that them <laughs> niggas got. <laughs> nah, nah, man. It ain't easy. Back to Steph Curry. I'm just happy that we got it and we got because this shit done been, uh, it's, it's been nasty to watch. It's almost like watching an episode of Hoarders. I, I can't watch Hoarders. So as far as Steph Curry and his father, look, congratulations to great basketball minds. We'll see what happens. 
But do they have the personality? Look, on the maybe everything may not always seem what it may seem because Steph Curry doesn't seem like he has a personality really on the court either, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know when Mason May said he, he could tell Dale's Curry attitude by when he sees him in the crowd. Mace, what are you doing this like this? What do you could tell by that? Like, what you mean? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> talking about, I, yo, I can tell his whole person now. You're talking about... <laughs> What do you see in when the crowd saw, that you think make you think he, make him when you make you think that he could do a podcast because you see him in the crowd? What what are you talking about? What do you see special? Tell me exactly this is what a great you see. Question. You I'm see glad podcasts. you said this up. Yeah. When he was yeah, yeah. when he found out, I think when he found out, like he him and his mom was separating or something. It was it was mm-hmm. a certain like thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really. It really <laughs> happened. It happened. What? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he looked like yeah. Oh, she tried. I can't say what I really want to say. <laughs> he was looking at the mom know, like, no, yeah, no. she better cut that out. <laughs> it was I like, the audience thing. needs more clarification. <laughs> what exactly look that he give gave her? He gave one that little I mean, stat no, stat no. I really don't. Usually I got you, but like, can't yeah, ask a very valid question. Because I'll say, this is no, this, I'll see no personality. <laughs> yeah, it was one time yeah. where it was a rumor or something about she had, she had started seeing somebody else. The mom had started seeing somebody else. And Dell gave her that look, like, <laughs> that he wasn't as jovial as we think he is. He had some nigga. He had a nigga suit zipped up. <laughs> and that's what I saw. <laughs> right, let me you ask laughing? you the question. <laughs> when you say when you say nigga suit, meaning like yo, I slap the shit out the nigga you with or yeah. bitch. Yeah, he had that look like nigga. Oh, niggas think it's a game. Niggas ain't as sweet oh, as so it look. Sweet. So you think he's taking that energy to the podcast? <laughs> I'm saying because I saw that. It's nothing like seeing a nigga you think is clean lace and he show you yeah, a like nigga vibe. I think, yeah. yeah, listen, I, I get what you're saying. And then if the, your last statement was, you know, this would be good because the dynamic with him and his father and his mom. And I was going to bring that up, but obviously you brought that up. If they're separated, what dynamic does those three have on the podcast? Because it's always interesting to see how people talk when they're free to talk. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) See, if he was married, it's it's stuff he couldn't say. But because he's not, it'll be things he could say that it will be interesting to see even how Stephen Curry would take that. You You know, like not Stephen Curry, but just imagine a dude talking to his son, he's like, you know, your mother be tripping. Or certain things he want to say that he can't say if if they're together, you know? You get what I'm saying. I, I think, Stephen Curry I is clean saying. cut, I don't so he, I don't really want to say what I, I want to say. He gonna do that. I don't think he's going to do that in front of stuff because just because he's not fucking with his mom. I don't mean stuff ain't fucking with his mom because he might start thinking about your mouth. You know, you did what you did. That's still my mother. End of the day, I That's don't know if these two personalities... That's how you get the popping, though. That's how you get it popping right there. I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with you. Are they willing to go that far? I think you're right. I think the whole podcast will take off right from there. Yeah. I, right from there. Watch your mouth, nigga. I think, <laughs> nigga, they tuning in. So, I don't know if that's where they're going. But look, uh, it's two great basketball minds. I'll give it a shot to see what they're talking about. But... Just because you have a great basketball mind and you're NBA champion and everything else, do you have the personality for it? Some people are great radio personalities. Some people are great on TV. Some people are great at both. But just because you have a voice in the microphone, not talking about Steph Curry or anybody like that, ask some friends that they think is cool first. Just be like, yo, you think this is I? Because if you got real friends, they're going to tell you. Especially if you ain't got no money yet. Because they ain't getting nothing out of it. So I'm like, man, that shit trash. Before the rest of the world tells you. At least get some people on your team that's supporting you that think it's okay before you just jump out the window. And I'm not talking about the Currys. People are going to watch them. It's a great basketball legacy. And we'll see where their personality is when it's time to film. But good luck. Mm. Good points. 
Okay, and 49ers running back Christian McCaffrey will grace the cover of the Madden NFL 25 game, becoming the first no. running back on the cover since 2014. No! What do you think of him getting on the cover? Ace is not excited. No, I told OJ this. God bless OJ. I told him every time somebody gets on that cover, it's like a jinx. You know they're going to get hurt. So I'm going to be looking with 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 binoculars, pause, for real, to see if McCaffrey makes it through this whole season. If he does, he'll be the first in a, in a long term. Normally, every time somebody gets on that cover, they get hurt. That's all I have to say. Congratulations, man. That's what I'll say to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Nigga's a dog, bro. Real, real dog, man. Uh, he works hard as shit. You know, you could tell, especially coming back from injury. You know, a lot of people may have thought his career had been over when he's in North Carolina. Came back with the 49ers looking better than he was looking in North Carolina. It just is good, just to say the least. So, congratulations to him. But I will want to know, and I don't have the answer to this, is when's the last time a white man been the cover of Matt? And if it was recently, I just want to know because. That's going to sell more Madden's. <laughs> I mean, John Madden was a cover twenty twenty three, but of course he passed. So yeah, that yeah. Was- I mean, I don't count because that's that's his game, and he passed away. So Madden, you're not counting Madden. I'm talking about player wise. Twenty twenty two, Tom Brady. Soon, but it's, yeah, yeah. Tom deserved that on the comeback. Of course, look, this is what I'm talking about. Anytime they can shove one of them niggas on that cover. More mm. Madden sales. More but I Madden. think Christian McCaffrey d- think I think Christian McCaff- McCaffrey uh deserved it. Who was on it before that? Um, Mahomes. Yeah, twenty twenty one, Lamar Jackson, twenty twenty, Pat Mahomes, twenty nineteen, Antonio Brown, twenty eighteen, Tom Brady again, but that time with the Patriots. That sounds Damn, right. Antonio fucking Brown, man. Yeah, Damn. man. Come yeah. on fucking Madden, man. Yeah. Five years ago, man. <laughs> Wow. What? Yep. Congrats, Christian McCaffrey. Definitely. Okay. And then to Mace's point, that Madden cover curse is like a thing. And honestly, like they're saying players basically 2019 and before Antonio Brown and before have been cursed. But like so far after, like Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, Tom Brady, they've been good. So maybe it's a broken curse. Maybe it's broken. They put the black man on it. Broke it. (laughs) The black man broke it. Pause. Okay. And then a last question before we wrap. So Glizzy champion, past, Joey. Y'all hold on. The la- put the black man on it and he broke it as well. <laughs> I said pause, yo. <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was okay. wow. Just, just a little bit. It's Good been a wild day, though. Pause. Thanks. Okay, last thing before we wrap, Glizzy champion Joey Chestnut has been banned from the 2024 hot dog eating contest over his partnership <laughs> with vegan hot dog brand Impossible Foods over Nathan's. <laughs> what do you think of this banning? The Glizzy championship. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yo, killer. They said he ate 62 glizzies. And <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Yo. What, what's your question? <laughs> what do you think of the banning? Like, he's literally being banned because he's he has a partnership with a vegan brand over Nathan's hot dogs. So what? I mean, so are the, the glizzies vegan? His partnership with Impossible Foods, yes. So he but can't it's typically eat not. Nathan's. Basically, yeah, because his Pause. partnership. Mm-hmm. Conflict. <laughs> I'm going to let Kim have this one. This is, I'm not interested. <laughs> Super force. Don't ever talk about letting me have nothing when this topic is a topic. <laughs> Be honest with you. <laughs> 
that this is basically the only person who can answer to the stat because there's no way I would have been looking through topics and say, let's talk about this tonight, Murder, what you think? <laughs> so, the stat. <laughs> stat, you yeah, answer I would have never wrote that down. This is only for you, Stat. Can, you can say how you feel. Can I add, like, I try to find the most, like, range of things, and that's, like, a trending topic right now because this glizzy, happens every year in New York. Cash. Stat, I was like, we, New York. Stat, we, <laughs> we're going to walk off and let you answer this. And you do your closing. This is all you. This you can actually you. start your own Take show you right from, from here. Welcome. Right here. Check it. Yeah, check out. Go straight <laughs> in and check out the stat from here. <laughs> Give us Over all. and out. How do I feel about it? I don't feel any type of way because I don't like them anyways. That's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.